In this video, we're going to look at the new scan to mesh workflow using Recap Pro 26 and the new Recap plugin for Revit. According to Autodesk, this plugin improves the scan to BIM process by making it easier to bring mesh data directly into Revit. So let's check it out. First, a quick note if you install Recap Pro 26, the plugin will automatically be added to Revit even if Revit was already installed. You don't have to do anything extra. Now let's start the mesh process. In Recap, you'll notice a new option in the menu on the left called Scan to Mesh. Hover over it and you'll get two choices, Cloud Processing or Local Processing. Cloud Processing sends your point cloud to Autodesk's servers for mesh generation but you'll need tokens for this. For this example, I'm choosing local processing, which keeps everything on my machine and gives me more control. Before generating a mesh, you can use a limit box to select just the area you want to process. This is helpful for large scans. Maybe you just want to work with a particular part of your project. In my case, the project is small, so I'm going to process the entire point cloud. Clicking Local Processing opens the Scan to Mesh settings window. To make things easier, Recap gives you preset profiles based on the type of scanner you used. If you're working with something like the Leica BLK360, choose Terrestrial Laser Scanner. If you used a Matterport Pro 3, I recommend Handheld Slam Scanner since that better matches how the scan was captured. If you want more control, turn on Customized Mesh Settings. Here's what each option means. Resolution controls the size of the triangles in your mesh. Smaller numbers mean more detail. Just remember, this number should be higher than the point spacing in your scan. Planar Fitting Tolerance helps simplify flat surfaces like walls and floors. Smaller values give you more detail, but also more triangles. Surface angle tolerance affects how many surfaces are segmented. A value between 18 and 22 degrees works best. Lower values split up the mesh more aggressively. Maximum tile size refers to how large each individual mesh tile is when Recap divides the model for processing or display. Tiles are chunks of geometry used to manage memory and rendering performance. Setting it to medium means recap balances between performance and detail. Once everything looks good, hit submit and let recap process the mesh. This can take a few minutes depending on your settings and hardware. Here I'm showing the task manager so that you can see how much the process uses the CPU and RAM. And you can see that it's working pretty hard. With such a small file, this was able to process in just under 2 minutes. When the process is done, your mesh opens in the Mesh Editor. Here's where you can clean, organize and prepare it for use in Revit. One useful feature is the camera toggle in the top right corner. Switch between perspective and orthographic views depending on what you're doing. Perspective is better for navigating in 3D. Orthographic is ideal when you're classifying geometry or aligning views. On the left is the model browser. Right now, the whole model is under unclassified and it's all sorted in a single tile called Tile 1. This is normal for small scans. For bigger projects, Recap will split the mesh into multiple tiles to make editing easier. At the bottom is deleted surfaces. Anything you delete goes here first so that you can bring it back later if needed. To start, right click in the model browser and choose Add Group. I will name this group Walls. Next, right click the wall group and choose Add Layer. Let's call this one Rear. You can make more layers later for other surfaces. Now we'll assign parts of the mesh to that layer. Use a selection tool like the cursor to select a face or 
the rectangle and lasso options to highlight part of a wall. With the mesh selected, go to the toolbar at the bottom and click classify. That section of the mesh is now organized under your custom classification. You can do this for other walls, floors and ceilings, whatever you need. Once things are classified, it's much easier to manage. And when it's time to export, you can choose exactly what to include. Before exporting, it's worth mentioning two really helpful tools for working with detailed or tricky areas of the mesh, the fence tool and the lasso tool. The fence tool lets you draw a rectangle across the mesh and anything enclosed gets selected. This is perfect for selecting long, narrow features like the edge of a slab or a bulkhead. It's much quicker than clicking or dragging manually and works well when you're dealing with tight linear geometry. The lasso tool is great for selecting around irregular shapes or curved surfaces. Click freely around the area that you want and Recap will pick up all the mesh faces within that boundary. This is especially useful when you're classifying complex areas like under stairwells or angled soffits. Features where rectangle selection won't give you clean results. Once you're finished, you're ready to export. So in the top left hand corner, click save and to the right of that, click the export button. This is the export window in Recap Pro's Mesh Editor. From here, we decide exactly what parts of the mesh to export and in what format. Now, let's go through the settings on the right. Export as, this is set to single file, which means all selected mesh layers will be exported into one combined file. Location, this shows where the file will be saved. Set your file name, format. Here, it's currently set to Navisworks. If you're linking into Revit, you choose Recap Mesh Revit Format. Texture, set to RGB, which includes color, but not high-res image textures. If you only need geometry, set this to none. Classification color, if this is turned on, each layer will keep its color coding when you import into another program. This helps visually separate wall faces from floors, ceilings, and so on. Up axis is set to Z axis, which is correct for Revit and most other BIM tools where the Z is the vertical direction. On the left side, we see all the layers we've created. Everything we've checked here will be included in the export. Now we're ready to bring the mesh model into Revit using the Recap Pro plugin. First, switch over to Revit and go to the Recap tab on the ribbon. Click on Link Recap Mesh Model. This is the tool that lets you bring in the .rcmr mesh file we exported earlier from Recap. Next, set the positioning method. Choose origin to origin. This means the origin point of the mesh from Recap will line up with the origin of your Revit model. This is important for keeping the mesh aligned with your project. Click add model and then browse to the location where you saved your mesh file. Make sure you're selecting the file with the dot RCMR extension, that's the Recap Mesh Revit format. Click open, then hit OK to complete the process. Your mesh is now fully loaded into Revit. You'll see it contained inside a bounding box and it can be viewed in 3D after linking the mesh using the Recap Pro plugin. The mesh model hierarchy panel appears. This window gives you control over the parts of the mesh that were classified in Recap. You can toggle visibility on or off for each group, helping you isolate the layers that you want to work with. Once you've isolated the mesh layers you want, like the walls, the next step is to add them into your project using the Add to Document tool from the Recap tab. This opens a dialog box showing all classified mesh layers from your model. On the left, you'll see the hierarchy again with every group and sublayer, such as ceiling, floor, pipe, noise, stair, and walls. On the right, you can assign a Revit category to each layer. By default, everything comes in as generic model, but you can reassign these based on how you want to use them in your project. If you see a yellow warning icon 
it means that that layer contains a high number of mesh triangles. It's not an error, but a performance heads up. If a layer is too heavy or unnecessary, just uncheck it. Revit will then convert the visible mesh layers into editable elements. For example here, I have access to my phasing parameters. Now that the mesh is embedded in your Revit model, you can use it as a reference to model over or trace over for your as-built geometry. Here, I use the bounding box to align my grids to. It's important to note that you cannot snap directly to the mesh faces or the Revit elements generated from the mesh like you can with point clouds. But the mesh gives you a visually solid and continuous surface which to refer from. Use a model line or reference line to determine the wall's location line Then model your wall and align it to that line. The tolerance for converting scans to BIM varies by purpose and LOD, but the general accepted industry standard is between 5 to 10 millimeters. Mesh tracing can comfortably achieve this accuracy with proper classification and clean up. This makes mesh tracing highly practical for most architectural as-built models, especially when paired with classification in ReCap. Point clouds might offer higher precision but are way more cumbersome and require snap filtering and are way heavier to work with. Let me know what you think in the comments.